risk management uh, document of this IT company and what you are seeing is an asset register. It has got listing of all the assets of this company. Uh, as you can see, these are the department names. ADM stands for administration and uh, QLT stands for quality department. BizDev stands for business development department, client one facing department likewise, so on and so forth. And the assets are classified into this company classified assets into this many asset groups, information assets, physical assets, services and software assets. Uh, each company can have their own uh, groups of assets. Uh, a company can have just two groups, tangible assets and intangible assets. Uh, then assets could be divided into asset subgroups like audit checklist, work papers, forms and you could see these are the actual assets which are audit checklist, COPC and ISO, audit reports and forms, CID personnel particulars that are, those are these are the forms. So likewise each department listed all their assets. You could see that quality department listed their assets. This day listed their assets, the existing account details, that is existing client details that, that is stored in this particular file server, prospective client details, that is prospective account details that is stored in this file server at this location. So uh, this is the first step in risk management process, which is asset identification. Next step is asset valuation. So the assets which got identified needs to be valued and there are two options one is assets could be valued based on classification of the asset asset classification is uh, discussed in detail in chapter 3 control objectives so we'll look at asset classification in detail through examples uh, in chapter 3 but broadly asset classification means that uh, a uh, characteristics or a uh, feature of the asset and uh, that feature will decide whether that asset could be disclosed to anyone and everyone then it would be uh, it may carry a, a classification of public if uh, an asset could be disclosed or shared only with the internal employees then it could carry a classification of internal if an asset could be disclosed only to the selected few people in the company then it may carry classification of confidential or if an asset is uh, of, of such uh, an uh, high importance that it could be shared only with uh, say maybe board of directors it may carry top secret or uh, such kind of uh, absolutely uh, uh, confined classification and each of these classification may carry a value maybe uh, public classification may carry a value of one and uh, maybe top secret classification may carry a value of three or four other option is to value assets based on uh, confidentiality, integrity and availability parameters. What we mean by confidentiality is an asset is disclosed or shared with only those people who are supposed to know content of that asset. Uh, what we mean by integrity is uh, an asset is changed only by those people who are authorized to change it. So in this case like this existing account details that is uh, uh, if this list needs some changes then that is changed only by the people who are legitimate or authorized to change it and availability is uh, whenever this asset is required it is available that is the availability parameter and breach of any of this parameter confidentiality integrity or availability may have major minor or negligible impact on the company and this particular IT company defined uh, this definitions through a process document so this process document says that uh, it will be a major incident if uh, it will affect delivery to the client, if it impacts more than 10% of the employees of the company, if uh, it has got statutory or legal requirements breach and likewise minor and negligible impacts are also defined. So based on uh, the uh, impact on the company, if confidentiality, integrity or availability is breached it may have a value of 3, 2 or 1, may, major may carry value of 3, minor may carry value of 2, negligible may carry value of 1.
and uh, this is how assets are valued so going back to the spreadsheet and uh, likewise this assets are valued here so this particular existing client list has got confidentiality value of 3 integrity value of 3 and availability value of 3 based on those definitions of major incident and the total asset score is 3 into 3 into 3 equal to 27 that is the model chosen by the company so likewise all the company all the uh, company assets are valued and this is what you are seeing value of each of the assets the confidentiality integrity and availability and the total asset value so just to recap so far we have done um, asset identification and then the asset valuation the next step is to identify threats so this is the list of threats identified for this uh, IT companies IT environment uh, list starts with airborne particles and dust so these are the threats uh, airborne particles or dust is a threat to IT environment if the if the amount of dust or airborne particles increases then there are chances of malfunction in the IT equipment uh, the other one is air conditioning failure bomb attack communication inf infiltration damage to communication lines or cables so this is the list of uh, all the possible threats to this company in IT environment uh, fire and flooding unauthorized download usage of software and uh, so on and so forth the next step is to identify vulnerabilities corresponding to these threats so the threat of unauthorized download and usage of software has got a vulnerability of inadequate network access controls uh, so if there are uh, inadequate network access controls it would uh, uh, lead to unauthorized download or usage of software if there are inadequate user and privilege management if those users who are actually shouldn't be given the rights to download software if they are given those rights then there would be unauthorized download usage of software so likewise uh, all the vulnerabilities uh, corresponding to each of these threats are identified the next step is threat assessment threat assessment is based on past uh, incidents of such kind of threats happening in the company so this company um, uh, again defined a process and this process looked like this each company can have their own process this company had this process that if uh, there is no uh, known precedence then value of one if there is uh, precedence of uh, once in three years then value of two if such kind of unauthorized download uh, or usage of software have been once in every quarter then value of 3 so this uh, value of 2 derived uh, keeping in mind those parameters which we have just seen uh, and the next step is to identify what are the existing controls so existing controls here are implemented security components like firewall IDS systems uh, this is against network security controls and this is for the threat of unauthorized download and usage of software so likewise uh, for each of this combination of threat and vulnerability what are the existing controls uh, those are identified the next step is to uh, do assessment for vulnerability which is strength of the control strength of the existing controls and again this company had designed defined uh, the parameters for vulnerability assessment those are here so if these controls are guaranteed to function effectively at every instance then value of one if these are partially effective then value of 2 if they are guaranteed to fail every time then value of 3 so based on these parameters this is the value of threats given to each of these controls like value of 2 for firewall and IDS that means that yeah it would generally function but uh, there would be instances of hacking or some other uh, things on the firewall and IDS that's where value of 2 that means that controls are partially effective so once uh, uh, just to recap we started with identification of, uh, of assets and uh, then we did valuation of each of the assets based on confidentiality integrity and availability parameter then we identified uh, the threats then we uh, identified vulnerabilities corresponding to threats then we did the threat assessment then we identified existing controls uh, corresponding to the vulner vulnerability and threat combination and once we identified existing existing controls we did uh, vulnerability assessment which is assessment of strength of the existing controls 
and the next step is which is the final step is uh, derive a risk score risk score is value of the asset multiplied by threat assessment value multiplied by vulnerability assessment value so in this particular case if the asset value is uh, this are the asset values uh, 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 boxes so you could see that here that this is the asset value of one asset value of two and so on and so forth and uh, these are the values which are multiplication of asset value into threat value into vulnerability value so that's where unauthorized software and some of the values some of the asset uh, values are going beyond uh, the acceptable risk level so these yellow boxes uh, suggest that these values are beyond the, the values uh, acceptable risk value decided by this company's management and that's where additional controls are required for bringing risk uh, within the acceptable limits so that's where these additional controls are um, suggested here that designing our baseline standards for configuration of firewall and intrusion detection systems and the periodic reconciliation of users for the second set of uh, the threat of vulnerability and uh, uh, existing control configuration which is uh, the uh, additional control given here and by implementing those controls this is the new vulnerability value so after implementing these controls vul vulnerability value will come down to one and these are the new risk scores which are all green means that risk is within the acceptable limit so this is the risk management process uh, done by this company and going back to the study material uh, step one is identification of information assets that's where we identified information assets in our example from all the departments we started with the uh, administration department then call it department if you recall it and uh, uh, we have an option of tangible intangible whereas the company took the option of information assets physical assets and uh, some other classes there valuation of assets uh, it could be based on asset classification as we discussed earlier and this uh, in our example this company did asset valuation based on confidence confidentiality integrity and availability parameters third step is uh, vulnerabilities and threats identification that we did uh, the whole list of threats you had seen where we started with airborne particles and the last example we had seen was unauthorized download of software uh, then uh, we also identified vulnerabilities for each of those threats then we did the vulnerability assessment also we did the threat assessment based on the probability or likelihood of assessment uh, that's where we had seen whether it is once in three years or once in quarter or no known precedence uh, then we derive the final risk score and that risk score decided whether it is within the acceptable limits of the company or not and that's where uh, for uh, risk management strategy there are four options either to avoid risk that is uh, not to do that business process so that uh, risk is avoided uh, risk mitigation that is identification of additional controls as we did in our example and that's what uh, resulted into reduction of risk or risk transfer that is outsources process so that risk is transferred to the outsourcing service provider or take uh, an insurance cover so that uh, if there is any financial loss it will be made good by insurance company or uh, retain or accept risk that means that do nothing whatever risk is there accept that and continue with the process as it is